the more you realize that so many things are unexplainable, like you'll find God or, or you, the universe, the, the, the whatever it is, is so apparent at, at the bottom of that glass, you know? Um, yes. And I love that. I love thinking that way. I welcome special guest Andy Hall from Manchester Orchestra. How are you? Hi, Kesha. How are you? I'm good. I think. I'm good. <laughs> it's a debatable answer, I think. <laughs> I think everything <laughs> All the time. is relative. I agree. Yeah, it's it's pretty good today. Things are all right. You and I, I think, are about the same age, and we met really young, too, when we were like starting our careers together. I think we both met... In 2008 at Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza. like a million, a million lives ago. Oh my God. That um, was such an important moment for my life. Is that a really important moment for your life too? Yeah, it is. It absolutely like is. Like that moment yeah, that a big, is a big punctuating mark in my life. If I were to draw a graph of my life, that would be a very, very important moment. The day that's we met. That's wild because that is that is the same exact feeling I have. That was the first time that like, it felt like it could be real. Like maybe this is actually Yes, a same. Thing, oh know? my God, I just got chills. Cause it was like, I was like, oh shit. Like all this manifesting and believing in myself and all that mm. kind of hokey bullshit that I've been telling myself since I was little and my mom's been telling me and my friends and managers. And it's like, all of that is actually like manifesting into a real life experience where people are watching me perform. And I feel like I'm going to shit my fucking pants. <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> and I no was like, doubt. okay, get it together, bitch. Don't shit your pants. And then my mom handed me a shot of whiskey and she's like, fucking relax, take this and just go. And I was like, okay. Oh, I, I, I needed your mom in that moment for <laughs> sure. You know, my coping mechanism was like, well, you're really insecure on stage. So just look extremely angry and never <laughs> smile. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's how we're going to get out of this. Um. I always do that whenever there's a photographer. I'm like, just look really pissed because you look cooler than when you're smiling. You look like a fucking it's, loser. It's so funny. Why is that it that so when you funny. smile that you look like a loser in pictures? I like specifically try not to smile in pictures because I look like a fucking dork. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I tried to do a reverse bit of that in like 2013, 14, where I maybe crack a little smile on a picture. It's like, no, you just don't look great. <laughs> well, it just looks infinitely it's, less cool. But then also making the Zoolander face. Also cringy. Jeff Tweedy just wrote this book. I don't know if you read it about um, uh -huh. like everyone should write a song. <clears throat> the concept of the book is trying to teach people who don't think that they can write songs to write songs because it's an experience that like every human should actually have this connection to, I and I agree so with too. that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk to the, my kids about that. Where it's like, I don't want to force you to like come into the studio or do anything, but like I gave my daughter my old phone and took everything off of, of voice memos and just let her you know, say like, here's how you want to record a song and just record a song. And it's linked to my iCloud and I'll get these, I'll, I'll, I'll be somewhere in the studio and look and I'll see, oh, she's, she's tracked something else herself, you know, and it's in her room going, you know, the walls are pink and the life <laughs> is good. You know, it's all the, the beauty of a five-year-old girl. I'm so happy that my, <laughs> my recordings from when I was five were not linked to someone mm -hmm. else's iCloud to listen to. <laughs> That's like, it's terrifying. <laughs> I'm totally invading your privacy. You're right. I didn't realize it's right now. It's in like fact, 1984 it. big brother shit. <laughs> Totally. I actually used one of them on our new record. I used a couple of them, asked her permission, of course, but like thought it would be a really cool way to this record is, is a whole lot about the supernatural, I suppose. And, and that it's, it's about a death and the questioning of what potentially happens after that. And she's telling this story um, to me on the phone that I recorded without her knowing I'm recording her about the boy who cried wolf and it was this beautiful, she's this got this sweet little innocent voice and she's talking about this story of sort of like innocence lost and like a mistake that, you know, this little boy's making in order to kind of have attention and this, and it was this sort of full circle feeling for me. It's like, man, um, I love inter 
intertwining that with the art that I'm making too, you know, like yeah. having, having those little things be a part of it. But I agree with you. The, the stuff I was making was like on a cassette and it was me like rapping joyful, joyful from sister act two oh. you know, or something like horrifically embarrassing. My God, please find that. <laughs> I know where it is. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Every time I start to worry about not having all the answers, it's like, it's, it is so much in my opinion, so much bigger that it's almost, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun to wonder and uh, explore. Like you would, you said a, a spiritual um, explorer. Explore. Like, I love that. That's, I, I, I totally understand that. Um, and there's also a sense of that. Like there was some great quote I read, I'm going to butcher it totally, but it's like, you know, you can find, um, you can find atheism immediately, um, you know, when you start to break it down scientifically, but the more and more that you dig down and the more you realize that so many things are unexplainable, like you'll find God or, or you, the universe, the, the, the whatever it is, is so apparent at, at the bottom of that glass, you know? Um, yes. And I love that. I love thinking that way. Me too. Because I read that your family, there's a really religious past, right? With your... Yes. Yes. I would say. Yeah. Grandfather and father, both pastors. Oh, that's um, like hardcore. I, yeah. I've, you know, I, I broke the mold. You sure <laughs> did. But like you still are, have a connection with the infinite consciousness of goodness or whatever the fuck people want to call it sounds like there's that absolutely. connection and that's the most important thing yeah absolutely it, you know my my grandfather was probably more i know was was more of a legalist uh, you know sort of a he would yell at people in church you know it's like during a period of time um where it was just you know more like you're doing it wrong <laughs> i would be so scared if someone tells me i'm doing something wrong i just I instantly too. cry at their face I don't <laughs> He wrote a song about it because at his at his funeral five years ago, six years ago, they played sort of like a greatest hits montage of like all of his sermons. And like he was literally like <laughs> he was just screaming at me for five minutes. I'm like, oh God. And I think that had not the screaming necessarily, but sort of the old school southern um mentality that that they had really pushed my dad to not be like that with us and was far more of a like I'm going to be proud of you whatever you decide you want to do and I'm going to love you no matter who you decide to be my mother was both was also like that so I definitely had support in that sense I yeah. never felt like I was I was a bad kid you weren't being you know, like blasphemous just, for not being a part of a specific church no not at all you know even to this day I don't really belong to any church um I I do like my kids to, to a certain degree to be a part of like, you know, a community yeah. in, in that way. And um, I can appreciate a lot of things that I got from it. I could also have a pretty good idea of what I don't want to, you know, yeah. have be a part of my, my family. To hear the entire podcast, listen and follow Kesha and the Creepies on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts.